few of our announcements. Um, if it's your first time here, you're new, there are cards in the seat in front of you. You can fill one of those out. It's a great way for us to meet you, learn your name, and we also have a free gift for you out in the lobby. If you're a returning visitor with a free t-shirt voucher, you can get your free t-shirt out in the lobby after service just to say welcome back. We're so glad you came back. Um, our Christmas play practices are this Saturday and next Saturday. If your kid's involved in any way, please make sure they're here just so they can get that extra practice. Tuesday, we have 180. It's always a great time. Everyone that comes can tell you it's a fabulous night. Dinner will be at six and then service is at seven. The women's Christmas party is December 4th at 6.30. Um, they are gonna have finger foods. If you can bring one, that's great. If not, come anyways. It'll be a great time with lots of gifts and fun games. And then it's Pastor's 70th birthday next Wednesday. Woo! We are gonna celebrate him turning the big seven zero. So please be here with us for that. Yep, yep. And then our next announcement is Food Bank, Saturday the 9th at 8 a.m. It's a great way for our church to serve our community. So please come and help for that. Our Christmas play, all the rehearsals, all the hard work, all the kids have put in. Be here December 10th to see all of that unfold into a beautiful Christmas play that they work so hard on. And then that's the end of our announcements. But I don't know, um, this is our last week of Sunday night service. Sunday nights from here to the rest of the end of the year, we will not have Sunday night service. So tonight's the last one. Okay, so let's pray and bless our service in, guys. Dear God, we're so thankful to be here today. We're so thankful that you're already here. We don't have to ask you to come. We don't have to ask you to meet us here because you already are. You're here ready and waiting. We pray that as you open this service up in worship, Father God, that it prepares everyone's hearts, that they're ready to come to you, that they're ready to meet you right here where we are, Father God, and ready to just walk into your arms. We pray that you bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and you know, on topic with Pastor's 70th birthday, I used to know a couple that grew fruit trees together, and they lived to a ripe old age. church. How are we doing this morning? You ready to worship the King that's worthy of all of our praise? Amen.
Alleluia. With everything inside of me, I raise a Alleluia. I will watch the darkness flee. Praise a hallelujah in the middle of a mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. part of the service where we're going to continue our worship through our giving and yesterday as I was just thinking about the, what to say during this moment the Lord reminded me of a very simple promise one that a lot of us are probably very familiar with 
In Psalm 37, verses 25 and 26, the psalmist says, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. They are always generous and lend freely. And this last part is really important to me and those of us who are parents. It says, and their children will be a blessing. Other translations say, people will talk about their children as a blessing. What does that mean? It means that people are going to look at the righteous who give freely and generously, and they're going to say, I want my family, I want my kids to be blessed like that. It's not a prosperity promise. It's not this pie in the sky, we're all going to be millionaires kind of thing. It's this promise of when people see other people being generous, they can't help but think better of God. If you want to see your family impacted greatly and tremendously and quickly, start honoring God with the resources he's already given you. Show your children and your grandchildren how important God is to you by how you handle the resources he's given you. And as they see you do that, they'll learn to live righteously and they will learn to be a blessing to other people because we've all been given much. And even in our most difficult times, we can remember Psalm 37, 25 that says, I'm young, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken with their children begging for bread. Amen. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with us. As Ashley said, as others have said, Lord, be with us here in your house because you are here and we ask that you would stay. Lord, as we continue to worship through our giving, Lord, we are reminded of what your word says, that you have always been faithful. You've always provided. You've never left us without exactly what we needed. But Lord, it's not just about me. It's not just about what I need. It's about those coming behind me, those that I'm caring for, like my children and others who have grandchildren or, or extended family they're responsible for. And we're trying to to show them Jesus. We're trying to show them how to walk out this life of faith. And Lord, we want to start right now in how we handle what you've blessed us with. We want to give back to you and show that, Lord, you are our provider, that our hope is in you, that they might see how they can follow and serve you as well. Lord, use every part of our lives, our giving, our service, our attitude, everything that we do every day to point others closer to you. And we worship you with all that we have and all that we are today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Alabaster jar, we pour it out at your feet. Thank you, Jesus, for being here this morning.
chose me Your love has called my name I've been born again To your family Your blood flows through
every chain, break every chain to break, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, to break, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am a child.
of that song is is so evident that in each of our lives that are represented here this morning and the things that will come to pass and the things that are yet to come to pass because he lives because he lives hallelujah Awesome worship. Awesome worship. Awesome worship. Thank you all very much. Absolutely. You look good this morning. You smell me or something this morning? Oh, how many uh, can feel the effects of too much turkey? How many went back to eat more than once? That's a shame. How many was very disciplined? You only ate a little bit of turkey, a little potato salad, a little potatoes, a little bit of uh, what does she have? Like the dressing. Uh, what else do you have? A baked. Uh, Pumpkin pie, pecan, pecan pie is really good. What else? What else, what else do we have? Corn, mashed potatoes, uh, sweet potatoes with uh, the marshmallows on top of them and melted, right? Had those. What else do we have? Dumplings, some rolls. How many is getting hungry yet? 
maybe you've ate so much of that same stuff you no longer want to have any appetite for that. So instead of a uh, Thanksgiving meal at Christmas, you're going to have ham this year. How many knows that ham is not only for Christmas, it's not for Thanksgiving? That's a quarter. Taco John's, that's exactly right. Um, Charles says that it isn't anyway. Well, good to see you. I feel like we're a little bit lethargic this morning. Good worship. Good worship. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, my phone was ringing off the hook this morning. Okay, actually, I had a couple calls, but uh, people who weren't coming because they were sick and because they had kids sick and because of uh, had to work and different things. And uh, you look good. You look good. Even Joe Bridges is here. It's a miracle. It's good to see y'all here. It's good to see you this morning, Joe. Uh, did you have fun at Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is a real struggle here. Hey, <clears throat> we've been in this series. This is the last, this is the last week of this series of uh, the people who refuse to. This is the last week. You're supposed to say, yay, or you're supposed to go, oh, it's a bummer. But this is the last week of it. And next, next month, we're going to start something different. But the, <laughs> it had to be Ashley. And I'm going to clarify this. I won't be 70. Some of y'all thought, man, he's 70? He's going to be 70? I'm glad I didn't spend the holiday with Ashley. I'll just say that. <laughs> I'll be 60 years old. 60. <clears throat> it's hard to believe that for those of you that are in their 30s and, and 40s, and especially if you hit 50, your time is just going by extremely quick. Who would have you? Everybody in the church is 50 years old and older. Hold up your hand, unless you're a woman. Okay, okay. Women, when you hold your hands up, women. Most women don't like to show that, you know. <laughs> Father, we thank you for a great day so far. I pray, Lord, that you give us the anointing upon our words, upon our thoughts. Lord, I pray for this congregation that will be receptive, not loud, just be receptive. That you would speak to our hearts and challenge us in our walk with you. We thank you for the opportunity to know who you are. We pray, Lord, this morning that we will know you more as time goes on. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. If you've got your Bibles and go to the book of Romans, chapter 12. I won't be going there yet, but I will be going there in a few minutes. Um, what everybody must w be willing to do, everybody who's refused to change, change in the next part is what? Change. That's what I said. Everyone who's refused to change, everybody has to be willing because every one of us in here have got areas of our life that we need to change. And some of us have, have, some of us have monumental things in our life that have controlled us for so many years that we don't think that we can change. We're thinking we're stuck being the way we are. As long as you think that way, that is exactly the way you will remain. It's not in our power, it's not in our anointing upon our life as a human, but it's in the anointing of Jesus Christ, what he did upon Calvary. It's about something he said and something, a lot of things that he said through his word. We've got to take, we've got to place in our mind and in our, our, our memory at times when we struggle and begin to put our trust in a way we never had before. Some of you may have some things you need to change and some of you may look at life, you look into the mirror and you say, utter perfection, Bailey, utter perfection. Utter perfection. I can't change. I'm only 30 years old. That will change. If you're 30 years old in here today, you're going to get older. And you're going to get crow's feet. And then you're going to get hair on your ears. It's the truth. It's just a matter. That's the type of change you don't like. What everyone must be willing to do in this room is change. And every one of us just about, if you're an adult of any age on you at all, you've made New Year's, New Year's resolutions, or maybe not to anybody, but just to yourself. This year is going to be a different year. This year I'm going to do things different. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to dress better. I'm going to smell better. I'm going to do something better this year to better my life. So God, I, Lord, as my witness, Lord, I'm making a commitment that I'm going to, my New Year's resolution is going to be this and this, and I'm going to be better. Have you ever made a resolution? 
I'll just give you a few. I will control my eating. I've never, I will never date a controlling person again. Let me go over these a little slower. I will control my eating. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, in just a moment. I will con- control my eating. I will never date a controlling person again. I will never lose control of my emotions and throw my, blow my temper again. I will never abandon my faith in front of other people or alone again. I will never doubt again. I will never swear or say a bad word again the rest of my life. I will never ask for help again. I will never give up on my New Year's resolution again. Those are all things and they're common and we can't t- take them with a grain of salt. We don't think they're that important. But it is important that we realize if we're going to change, there's certain things that we've got to do in, in our thinking and our lifestyle that, that produce a, a more beneficial walk with God. And also more beneficial things for me. More things that I can uh, honestly say that I've, I've given my best. And you know what God does? He honors it with our best. But very rarely do we give him our best. We don't want to change. We don't want to change the way we eat. You know, when I first met Wanda, I just limited amount of food. I ate potatoes and, and meat and, and maybe corn and maybe a roll or a nice steak or, or something like that. But I didn't eat a lot of things. We didn't eat a lot of rice. I've learned to eat a lot of things I used to would not eat. I still will not eat broccoli and cheese. It's gross. I won't. I don't like that stuff. It stinks. And, and there's, what else do I not like? Chocolate pie and coconut cream. It's just nasty. What? Can you help Lasagna is a, is, is a big no-no. If you want to have us over to eat or something, say, I'm going to fix lasagna. That will let me know your true feelings about your pasture. Some people feel that we are helpless against certain things that we struggle with in our life, that we're a victim of things. And there's a lot of us that have things that we're victims of. And, 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 and we think they're more permanent than what they are. A lot of things, you, many of you are struggling with in your 30s. As you get older, you're going to begin to see and value things differently. You'll begin to watch diminishing effects about the, the current things you're going through. When you hit your 40s, you start growing up and maturity sets in. How many of you have ever heard of sanctification? Sanctification is a great thing, but it's a process of cleaning that the Lord does. You have heard me talk about this. You throw a, a rough old cobbled up rock into the river if it stays there long enough it's going to get round enough of the edges are going to come off it's going to get round it's going to be pleasant to the eye it'd be easy to pick up and hold and think that's such a pretty rock but it always wasn't pretty and right it wasn't always pretty it used to be rough and had a lot of edges on it and a lot of times we don't realize that that the sanctification is a process of, uh, within our lives that everybody goes through everybody we want things instantly. We want the laser. We want the, want the laser surgery. We want all the, te- the rough edges taken off by God and the supernatural with, with the Holy Spirit moving in our life and that everything just fixed. I have a confession to make. I drank a Mountain Dew this morning. <laughs> I've been up since five o'clock. I just, I can tell the effects of it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, hello. Um, so and if I kind of get hyper mode with my words sometimes, it, it happens like that. But I drink Mountain Dew. So um, remember, change is necessary, but it is never comfortable. Change is never comfortable. Just because you're struggling with, with change is something in your life doesn't mean it's going to be comfortable. Doesn't mean it'll be enjoyable. But the end result is what you're looking for. It's what you're looking for. The temporary, the now, the part that you, you're going through withdrawals or, or going through with a, a, something you're hung up about. Maybe you love chocolate pie and, and, and what's the other one? Coconut cream. We should be eating things like pecan pie. That's the best thing. With a little vanilla ice cream on top, if you, if you like, you don't have to. A strawberry pie is another good choice, especially the time of the, win, of the year, right? It's not, they're not very good. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How long does it take us to renew our mind? Just because it says it in Scripture, does it happen one time and just poof, everything's different? To renew something, you have to do it again and again. The process of renewing your mind. The process of sanctification. What you used to do, you would not do now. 
would you? Because it grieves not only you, grieves you in your spirit, but also grieves the heart of God. There's things as you mature and as you, as you grow in your walk with God, you begin to view things differently. And this change in your life, everybody do this. It's modified A hand in sign language. If you do this, put it like this, left hand in front. Don't, don't do backwards. Left hand in front, right hand in the back. Change. If you don't know, if I don't accomplish anything here today, change. The process of sanctification is something that every one of us have either went through or, well, actually, we're still in the process. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you stop learning. Doesn't mean, mean you start, stop bettering what you are and bettering who you are. It's a process that will be with you the rest of your life. There'll be certain things you overcome that you realize, oh man, this is a hang up in my life. I never, even, I never even realized that before. There's something missing. There's something I need to change. So you start the process again, not from the other things, but all of a sudden this new thing, God's wanting you to change that in your life. And the scripture says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove. One of the greatest things about changing, about God renewing your mind, is you're able to see things properly. So you may be able to prove that which is good. You will know the right relationships that are strong and, and right in your life. If there's a, a relationship that you have that's questionable, it will reveal that too as well. Things that proves in our minds what God wants to do in our life and acceptable and, and the perfect will of God. So we can prove what is acceptable, what is good, and what is perfect in our life. It may not be perfect and good and acceptable in other people's lives. You know, I'm sitting here making fun of food, you know. I know a lot of you love coconut cream. I know a lot of you love chocolate. I know Tyson loves chocolate. Uh, uh, somebody had a piece of, oh, Sophie had a piece of chocolate pie first time in her life, and she didn't what? She fell in love. I've had chocolate before. It's like chocolate pudding. Who, who can eat chocolate pudding? But I've had other pies like apple, strawberry. That stuff is amazing. We all have things we need to improve on or drop the things that have get, gotten control over, over us in our life. I mean, you know, this is with Thanksgiving season and food's a big issue. And it's been a bigger issue to me because I hear Charles talk about it all the time. And that's the honest truth. Sorry, Charles. There, there's, food is a big issue. And I never realized that people sat and thought about food that much. And, and the only thing I thought about where we go out and eat sometime, you know, about something that is, we'll move on, okay. We all have things we need to improve on or drop things we've gotten control over us. But what is wrong with change? I'll tell you what's wrong with change. It's uncomfortable to you and it's uncomfortable to me. But how do we do it? We, 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 we overcome things and we learn to get through things by what? Renewing our mind, our mindset, what we feel convicted about, what we don't feel convicted about. What is wrong with change? It's uncomfortable, it's different, and it really happens overnight. It rarely happens overnight. Everything in our church, I believe in everything in life. You can ask my staff and the stuff that we talk about here at church. I like something different sometimes. How many like the different, different uh, setup for Christmas out here? The little photos shoot, yeah. We, we put the nativity up here, why? Because it's different. Has everybody seen it yet? It's got a spotlight on it. You just kind of see it. I like change. I like things that are different. Now, I don't like, I don't like some food things different, but I like the things that we see and things that we do to be different. That's just me. Maybe you have a real problem with being different. You have a real problem with, with something changing in your lifestyle. Everybody in here you need some changes. Some of them are bigger, some of them are small. There is a battle between our flesh and our spirit. Ephesians chapter six, verse 12 says, we wrestle not with flesh against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers. Most of the time, the battles that we have that we have, we're trying to change are not things physical. 
the things spiritual, things that have control over us and they dominated it for us for so many years. So we're all in a battle. We're all in a battle with this change in our mind. There's only one way to, to, to win this battle. We get to it next. Why don't people change? How many knows what courage is? What is courage? You don't have to say it out, Ashley, but, but what is courage? A bold is to take charge, to, to, to face something head on, and to, to oppose something that's coming against you that can be detrimental to you. Courage, about where most people would run, you will stand up to it. And in the life in which we live right now, and in the day in which we live, we've got to have courage like we've never had it before. Because there'll be things that come against us and things that challenge our thinking and things that challenge the way we live in certain areas that we live. Let me tell you, there is one truth. There is one truth. You know where I'm going. There's one truth. This is the truth. It doesn't, don't, it don't always set right with our personal convictions. It doesn't always uh, seem right because maybe the lifestyle you're living or what you're involved in or whatever else is going on in your life. But this is truth. It is not to beat you over the head. It is not. This is truth to hopefully help you and improve your life. Everything is a process of, of, of living and the process of it's becoming greater and better. It's not self-seeking. Why don't people change? Most people don't change because they don't have courage to change. They don't have courage. They just soon to bow down and just let things be that they be. Some other people never change because they don't think it's possible. Maybe you have lived your whole life just thinking that what you're doing is just normal. Or the thing that keeps holding you back and the thing that keeps besetting your life and, ups and upsetting everything in your life is just something that's passed down from generation to generation. That may be true, but nowhere in the scripture does it say that you have to settle for that. No place in scripture does it say that everybody has to be the way your family has been. Or the way your old ex-husband had been. Or the way your ex-wife had been. Or the way your grandfather had been. I've, said, I've shared this many times. Uh, um, Director of Teen Challenge, Map Link. Map, Brother Map is a great godly man. But I heard him say this more than once. His irrational temper he had at times. And the way he acted times at times was passed down to him from his, from his parents, his mother, father, whatever, things that they had they'd always lived a certain way. And instead of doing something about something in his life that he, he, he can't control, but God could, he just accepted it. Maybe your family was a family that always stole everything. They took advantage of any situation that they had. Maybe your family was one that they had to have a drinking party every time they got together. It was just what they'd done. But what is God saying to you? Something in your life that needs to change. Live a lot. We've, lived, we've come to live a life of excuses. It's easier just to stay this way than to, to feel, because we feel destined. Has anybody ever felt destined to something? You ever felt like that? This is part of your life. You're in. You're in a funk, if you will. And you're just stuck there. No hope in sight. I know some of you have grown up in church, but I know a lot of you did not grow up in church. And I will say this. How many have, have I seen over the past one or two years do a complete change in the way they are? It didn't come from them doing it on their own, but they saw it counsel they sought uh, camaraderie they sought things from the word there's a, it's a whole nest egg of things that come together and i've seen great changes in your life a lot of people never ever expected anything out of your life but now for some reason you pay your own bills for some reason you're, you're doing everything that you're supposed to do that's just normal for for a human to, be, to live like something is happening in your life what has changed in your life is that you've come to know jesus 
person who's been experienced with him and he is making himself real to you. And so, so things that you used to do are no longer there. There is, there's a different way of doing things, a different way of reasoning out things in your life. Maybe your family looks at you and they scratch their head and say, why are you living like this? Because something is compelling me. It's a better, to better myself, to better my life. I want my children, I want my grandkids to have a better lifestyle. There's something about change that is, I've learned to accept. London doesn't do well with change. Every time she comes to our house and something is in the house, we've done something different and fixed things different. She don't, live, she don't really like it. She don't like change. I like change. I lived in a lot of different towns growing up. Moved a lot. When you have a little 50 foot pink and white trailer, you, you, your parents up and move a lot of times. Tennessee, Florida, Kentucky. Tennessee, Florida, Kentucky. Tennessee, Kentucky, Tennessee, Kentucky. Tennessee, Kentucky. My brother's first uh, six years of elementary school, he went to like eight different schools. And it wasn't because my parents didn't pay the bills. My dad was always looking for an opportunity to do better. So he wasn't afraid of change. Now, this is talking, I'm talking about a man who grew up in eastern Kentucky and didn't have a lot. Rarely had, a, had anything really to benefit him from his parents. But he wasn't afraid of change. And I'm asking you this morning, don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid. Embrace it. Say, okay, God, what do you got in store for my life? What do you want to do differently in my life? This change requires you to think in new actions. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, Be confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work will continue to do this work. A lot of us feel like God will save us. We get all emotion. We have a great feeling for the first month. And then it's all of a sudden it kind of tanks from there. For some reason, we kind of just give up the ghost and we say, okay, what must not have been for me. Yes, it was for you. It's that you haven't been taught and you haven't experienced enough to know that it takes a while for you, for you to really grow in the things of the Lord. Has anybody ever been there? It was good for a month. It was good for two months. See, this walking with Jesus is good for the rest of your life. It's a change that always goes on for the rest of your life and it'd be beneficial for you in your life. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why? So that thinking can be changed. Be confident in this very thing. He which has begun a work in you will not finish it. He has finished it. He will not give up on you. There is something in store for you in, in your life. Change may seem impossible at first. It may seem unbelievable. And a new, a new members class, and one of the things I always talk about is sanctification. When I, uh, now Charles and I do the new membership class together. He does one part. He takes the scripture and, and goes through with the 16 fundamental truths of the assemblies. And, and I go through the practical side of, of who we are as a church. And one of the things I, I, used to, I always try to talk about is this process of sanctification. You may think, what's he talking about? I've, I've tried to talk about it a little bit, make it, it pretty un understandable. But if, don't, don't take this wrong. You don't think I'm going to, out on a limb of saying you're a heretic if you're doing these things. But when a person first gets saved, I notice that they'll come to church and, be here and they'll be involved and hands are raised, whatever. But they go outside and they still have a problem. Don't get offended at this. I don't care if you smoke. If you smoke, it's up to you. But this person will go outside and he may smoke a cigarette or, or he may even have a beer every now and then. But for some reason, I've had them come and talk to me. After a period of time, they get closer and closer to God and they don't see a need to do like they used to do. That's a chipping of the stone. That's a change that will bring great results. And as they chip these stones and as the st stone becomes smoother, God does more and more through the life. Third, I don't know if any of you ever considered yourself a rebel. How many ever considered yourself a rebel in here? <laughs> 
Okay, I got two over here. I mean, one, one, two. I can sit here and tell you who you consider yourself a rebel. Kyle, you consider yourself a rebel. I'll just pick on the men. Kyle, Joe, Tyler. I won't pick on any more. Ethan. Charles and Joe, eh, not too much. Travis, you're probably a rebel. He's getting his way, he'd run over you. Billy, if, if God's grace hadn't found him in his life, he would have been extremely, uh, extreme rebel. Rebel. What happened? What was the change that, that took place in life? But they weren't afraid of these changes. I, I look at each of these guys and they smile or they nod their head at me or whatever. They welcomed the change welcomed it it wasn't lorded over them it wasn't he was trying to impose something on them but there's a lot of people that are just resistant to it don't be resistant what God wants to do in your life you may not even understand all of it right now but you will if you give God your life give him your heart and give him a chance he may not do it in the first six months but you give him the first six years there's a lot of changes you're going to see in your life that you didn't have before it's a process that he begins to work in your life. Proverbs 13, 15 says, A good understanding gives favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. There have been so many people I've shared with over the years. The way of the transgressor is hard. In other words, the way of open rebellion and open sin and open a mentality of, I'm, I'm going to buck the system. I'm not going to be a slave to anybody. I'm going to buck it. I'm going to rebel against anything and any authority that comes in my life. I, I can tell you, their lives have been full of, of transgressions and full of, of hardness and emptiness, unfulfillment. And they wonder why their life is always a rape because they always go after what? Their own, their own desires, unwilling to be taught. They're determined to live their life their own way. I know we've got a couple of Elvis fans in here. I will do my impersonation of Elvis. I will not do my impersonation of Elvis. But he sang a song and he, it was, whatever. He goes, I did it my way. I did it my way. And how many, how many ever heard this song before? I did it my way. Okay. I did it my way. We'll do more. Oh, when you think you're going to do everything your own way, it's amazing how big of a mess we create with doing it our way. And every one of us have. Every one of us, to some degree, have said, I'm going to do it my way. We don't re realize that somebody's looking at us thinking, oh, if you just would just listen. If you would just listen, don't be stiff-necked and rebellious. You are not the smartest person I've ever known. You're not the sharpest guy around. You're not the sharpest tool in the toolbox. Progression of a sinful life often leads to a life of frustration. And I can tell you from experience, I've seen this over and over and over again. People who just have lived a lifestyle of sin and they rebelliousness, their life is constantly frustrating from junior high, junior and high school, all the way through adulthood. Their life has been nothing but frustrations because they keep doing things their own way. And they want to change. And in here this morning, every one of us has got to have some change in our life. Maybe you have changed a bunch, and that's great. And, but you're open to anything that God has for you. That's wonderful. But there's some in here that are not open to anything God has for them. The effects of, of a person who will not listen. Go to Romans chapter 1. And verse 26. But for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of woman burned in their lust from one toward another. Men with men working that which seemed unseemly. And receiving in themselves the recompense of, of the heir of, was, which was meat. And even, and even as they did not even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge or gave God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient when you become so rebellious let me tell you you can be extremely rebellious you can be this I know this is talking about immorality about men being with men and women being with women but it's but we can even take this to a lot of other things don't think that that's the only thing that's, a, that's a detestable in God's eyes. A rebellious heart. I mentioned this guy last week. His name was Samson. The reason that Samson died early in life is because he done things his way. He didn't get involved in homosexuality, but he got involved in immorality. And it led him down a path he never should have been on. And if you're here today, there's things in your life that may not be anything sexual, but there's things in your life that will that seem to always be set. You always keep taking you backwards. It's amazing how many people can resent God sometimes. Uh, they hold him accountable for everything that happens to him. I'd like for the worship team to come back up. This is what happens when we know it all. We become indifferent, hard headed. Why should I change? I'm fine being just the way I am. And how many of us have said that before? Don't show your hands. We're easily offended because some people probably got offended by what I'm speaking up here. The spirit of arrogance gets on a person and they begin looking for a fight. Verse 28, they didn't even like to retain the knowledge of God. No accountability. When a person gets to this place, it's a very strong spirit. You hear, I hear a lot of pe- preachers talk about this. Uh, Mark um, Driscoll talks about the uh, ancient spirits in modern days. Things that happened a long time ago, we're still dealing with today. And this same spirit will get upon you, upon your life, upon your heart, upon your mind. It's a very strong spirit to break, one that causes us to do the very things that we once thought we would never do. I'm going to close with Ephesians chapter 4. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. There's a promise. There is a promise that you can take on the challenges that you face. I'm going to quote some scriptures, halfway quote them. I can do all things, Philippians 4. There is nothing that can separate. That's Romans chapter 8. There is nothing shall be impossible with God. It's Luke chapter 1. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's 2 Timothy 1. People who refuse to change. People who refuse to change. We're not those people. I'll just tell you, I don't feel like we are those people. I don't think that people who are here this morning, there's just no desire to change. Maybe some reluctance for changes. Maybe some reluctance for things you're going through in your life. Maybe a little resentment because things have worked out the way they have. (laughs) 
I pick on Brian quite a bit, but you know, Brian Jones never ever thought he would change. Did you? What was the use of changing? What your life was meant to be, right? Just, just, yeah. 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 You heard what he said. He said he was ignorant. And uh, he's not stupid, but he was ignorant. And a lot of times we do things because we're just ignorant. And a lot of times we take offense to the word ignorant. It doesn't mean you're stupid. That means you're dumb. That means you're dumb. You're just ignorant. There's things that you haven't thought about. You haven't thought about correctly. I don't believe there's a person in here that doesn't want change. Now, there's a price with it. And it doesn't happen quickly. Sometimes it does. You can change. No matter where you're from, no matter what you've experienced, and no matter how you currently live. But it is paramount that you know there's only one way that you can change certain things. And that's with God working through you. It's not on your own. It's not a it's not a reading books about positive confession. It's not about necessarily just being positive. It's only as Jesus, and you open your heart and you say, Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, convict me and show me the things wrong that I need to change in my life. You see, there's a difference. You may want to get saved sometime and you want change and you want it to happen right now, instantly. You didn't get where you are instantly. Some of you are living very frustrating lives. Driving yourself crazy. But if you're, if you're here and you need change this morning, man, this altar, that's what these altars are for. For change of heart. Acknowledging, Lord Jesus, I need you to be the Lord of my life. Not just to, to bail me out of something when I get in trouble or I get aggravated, but Lord, be the Lord of my life. And Holy Spirit, guide me every day. Every day as I live, I will not embrace the things that this world seems to bombard me with. The things that my past has always bombarded me with. They're going to sing a song, and as they do, man, if you feel led to come and pray and, and just get things right, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, direct you. Be intimate. Be sincere.
close. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not big on, on manipulating people or working them up on their emotions. I know a lot of times the preacher get up here and rant and rave and get everybody in a frenzy on just from what they say. I want to tell you something. If you are here, And change is something that you're afraid of or something that you struggle with, especially as it, as it comes with the Lord, about things from the Lord. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I'm going to ask you to do something. We're going to close in just a minute, just a second. I want you to grab hold of the hand beside you, wherever you are, somebody you're with or something. And acknowledge and say, Lord, I, I, I'm scared to change I don't like it I don't like change Brian Jones probably didn't like change in the past but now he loves change Tyson Hensel didn't like change in the past but now he loves change so if you would grab hold of the one beside you just begin to pray with him I'm going to pray in closing as we leave Father, we come to you, Lord, asking in the name of Jesus. Every heart that is here, that God, the people that deal with, have a hard time dealing with change, things they don't understand, things that frustrate them, that God, you would answer prayers. God, you would restore what needs to be restored. Let them know that your purpose in their life has always been for the good. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, we bind, Lord, all the things that, that a lot of people have got in their life things that are holding them back and things that are keeping them as slaves to certain things. That God, that they would have liberty in their life and their lifestyle. Lord, that every generation out after them, Lord, would no longer have these things attached to their, to their spiritual well-being. But these things will be a thing of the past. And they'll be, say, be able to say, I remember when I used to be like this, but now I'm set free. I remember when my family used to be this way, and now they're different because something I've done, something I've done in honoring God, he has brought so many things to pass that only He can bring to pass. We ask you to do amazing work here today, Lord, in people's hearts and people's lives. We give you absolutely all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. When I don't see